Welcome back. So I haven't been filming recently because I've had so much going on. Um, I just finished finals from school. I actually got 100%, I just found out today. I got 100% on my final. So that's awesome, I should have an A in the class. Lots of hard work, lots of sleepless nights, and no time for YouTube, so I apologize. But at the same time, I've also been getting prepared for Elena's birthday, of course, so this is another video in that series. As well as getting prepared for baby number two, we just got our official induction date, which will be March 15th. So today is Tuesday before, so I have less than a week. So on Monday, we're going to the hospital to get induced. So I've been trying to get the house ready. We're supposed to put the crib together today. It's just a lot, it's just a lot, right? So anyways, um, today's video will be about the um, chucks, bling chucks that I'm making for Elena's birthday outfit. So if you haven't watched the other videos, I did do a video making her birthday shirt and then her birthday tutu, which everything is um, themed for Coco Melon. I'll show you. If you didn't watch those videos, please do, but here is her birthday shirt, her rainbow birthday tutu. So to go along with that outfit, I'm also in the process of making, um, or like, blinging out a pair of chucks for her, you know, um, Converse Chuck Taylors. So here they are. They're so tiny. My baby's gonna be a year old in like two weeks, less than two weeks. So that's what the number one is on there for her, for one. So I've already done one shoe to show you the example and um, to make sure I was doing what I needed to do. So now I'm gonna work on shoe number two today and that's what you're gonna watch. So you're gonna watch exactly how I did this from beginning to end. And um, I actually ran out of jewels, so those are coming in the mail tomorrow, but I have everything else. So where I'm gonna start off is making this patch. So I made this Coco Melon patch on my brother PE800 embroidery machine. So I'm gonna make patch number two for the second shoe. Show you how I attach it and how I decorate. Okay, so just follow along. Thanks, thanks for watching. Come back for the rest of the series because I have more Coco Melon birthday themed projects coming up along, all along. Okay, so my first step is to take my last shoe. Um, I went ahead and took out the laces because I'm gonna put some ribbon laces, laces at the end. And what I wanted to do first was measure the tongue because that's where the patch is going to go. So I just use a regular old ruler and I looked at the widest point. It's about oh, a little short of two and a half inches. And then I don't want it to go too far down the, the tongue because I want the, the ribbon shoelaces there. So I kind of want it like somewhere midway between where this um, thing is for the shoelaces. So I started from there and I saw it's like a, an inch and a half, but it's okay if it goes up higher because that actually makes it look kind of cute. So I decided at that point that I wanted something around the neighborhood of like two to two by two inches or two by or like two and a half by two and a half inches. So that's kind of what I went with. And so when I put the design together in Embrilliance, that's what I went with. Um, if you need a tutorial for Embrilliance, please check out one of my other videos. I do do a full tutorial there. So first did the measurements, then um, put those into Embrilliance to make my design, saved it to my flash drive, loaded it up onto my brother PE800. I already have this printed out, which again, um, you can do this from Embrilliance. And what I like about this is it tells me all like how long all the stitches are um, and uh, or how many stitches per step as well as which colors I need and the the numbers for them so then I can just go here to my thread wall and then pick out the colors that I chose already and as you can see here are all the colors that I'm going to need for this project just for this one patch so I'm going to put this aside I also, since I did another patch already, I had already gotten my fabric ready because this is a, this is an applique patch. It's not just straight fill stitch. So I needed green for the watermelon and I already pre-heated um, on and put on my heat and bond light. If you can see that. So this is, this is the part that's going to uh, adhere to the shirt or to the patch. 
I need a little bit of red, so I had that. And I need it pink, and pink goes on top of the green. But with this being such a light color and this being a darker color, it kind of shows the green through, which I don't like. So what I do is, I, at that point, I do two levels of pink. And I put heat and bond light on both, so that one piece of pink will attach and adhere to the green, and then the other piece of pink will attach and adhere to the other pink. So it's three layers, but it looks a lot better. So these are already pre-done. I've done that ahead of time. So now I need to hoop. So even though what I'm doing is small, I'm still using a five by seven stable, um, five by seven hoop just to make it easier on myself. And so therefore I'm using a full piece of stabilizer to fit in that hoop. And the good thing is I don't have to sit and babysit it because it's not a t-shirt. I don't have to hold the shirt back or the onesie or anything like that. And let me tell you something, as somebody who only has a single needle machine, it feels wonderful to not have to hold something back and not have to sit and babysit something when it, when you're embroidering. The only headache at that point is just switching out the threads every step. So I can imagine how wonderful it must feel to have a multi-needle machine, to not have to worry about babysitting the fabric or switching the threads. Like, I feel like I just got a little bit of a taste of the good life. So one day I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna work really hard because I really want a multi-needle machine. Um, this is doing great and I love my brother PE 800. It's an, it's an awesome, phenomenal machine. And thank you brother for making something so great for such an affordable price compared to those multi-needles. But eventually I gotta be a big girl and upgrade. And I can't wait, I cannot wait for that day. So for now, here's a piece of um, stabilizer. You can do two if you want. Um, it'll probably make it stronger. But this is for one day. She's not gonna wear these shoes again. She's, uh, so it's okay. I'm just gonna use one piece of stabilizer. This is tear away. I should be using cutaway, but I don't have any. I wanna use this first before I start buying some more um, stabilizer. So I'm just going to put this right in the hoop. And it doesn't have to line up. I don't have to find a center because it's just a patch. But I'm going to tighten it really, really good. I can imagine also when I have a multi-needle and I don't have to use this kind of hoop anymore. I can't wait to get like a, those magnetic hoops. Every time I just see somebody use one, I'm just like, oh, that looks so nice. One day, we will get there. So, nice and easy. I don't even have to worry about lining it up. It's good to go. My bobbin thread's still looking good. I have to thread my top. So I'll show you that. So one thing I've talked about before is, yeah, we're gonna do um, tack down stitches and um, placement stitches but those colors don't matter so I'm just gonna go to my first step that has a color that matters and it's the green so I'm gonna load green and just do my tack down and placement stitches with this because it doesn't matter it's gonna be underneath if you do need help um, with threading your machine I do have another video for that. It's called Full Applique Tutorial on Brother PE800. Please take that, check that out. And I do plan on making more tutorial videos soon. Okay. Boom, look at hands free. Look, Ma, no hands. I don't have to hold anything back. So, it just did a placement stitch for me which means I can now place my green fabric. And again, just put it down, press play. I don't have to hold anything. What do I do with myself? Just sit here and stare at the camera, apparently. Okay, so now I have to do my first cut. When I get close, I do, I use these curved scissors to cut the fabric, but until then I use either like the, something like a straight scissors. These came with the Brother P800 by the way, or I'll even use like fabric scissors to cut a lot of the bulk of it off. And then when I get closer, then I use the orange scissors. It just makes it a little easier for me. And okay, 
now that that's done, I'm just going to continue um, working on the patch, doing all of the steps. So I'll um, film some of it, speed it up, so you can see the process. And then you can see later on how I uh, adhere it to the shoe, and then do all of the bling for it. Wait, it's all done now. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the hoop. And um, I can just cut it down. up the back a little bit this is a you know bit of a mess I want it to be all like just one cohesive unit and then what I'm gonna do is just cut around perfectly around the stabilizer so that I just have a patch now what I tried doing with the other shoe was putting some heat and bond light on the back and then ironing it on to the tongue of the shoe turns out that heat and bond light is not strong enough to adhere to the shoe because it is like canvas so it's harder so it just wasn't enough um, what I have seen people do in videos is they use heat and bond ultra so I'm guessing you know light ultra it's much stronger so that would work but I didn't have any on hand so I didn't do that um, and I'm just in too much a rush at this point to like wait to order something so what I did instead was just use a hot glue gun and it held up fine so after I cut this out I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I just adhered it with a hot glue gun and then we'll continue decorating from there All done so on the first patch I did put heat and bond light on the back I think I should have done that for this one um, I probably just would have held especially these little antenna and the little ladybug together a little bit better but it's okay for now but um, just to do it this way but otherwise the next time I do a patch I'm obviously gonna put the heat and bond ultra so here's my baby shoe um, I took out the shoelaces so I can bring the tongue all the way out um, I have my glue gun nice and preheated. So I'm going to see exactly where I want it and I want it to line up with the other shoe. So yeah, that's what I thought. I put it midway between this thing here that holds the shoelaces. So like that. Make sure there's a little piece of string hanging there I'm going to get rid of piece of thread okay so I want it about there so instead of putting it on the back of the the patch because you know part of the patch is not going to be attached to the tongue I'm just gonna put the glue all over the tongue like so I'm gonna do this really quickly before the glue dries because you know glue gun happens to dry pretty quickly Make sure I put it center. And it's already pretty sticking. So I'm just gonna like smooth it down some. Look at, besides this like string here, no fuss, no mess. And it's already on there. Nice and simple. I'm gonna get rid of this tag just so it doesn't bother her. Okay. So now that's done. What I wanted to do when I did the first shoe is I wanted all the big stuff on the shoe first so I could do all the jewels around it. So the patch is here. Um, there's a regular converse patch on this side, on the inside, which I'm not decorating because it's the inside. This is here. Um, I didn't want to do anything here on this rubber part. Um, so each is on. Everybody does things differently too. Some people put a lot more jewels. You know, I'm. I'm not big on things being like super gaudy, like I like glittery and fun and bedazzled and whatnot, but I don't need everything to be like covered like head to toe, you know? So this is just how I wanted to do her shoes, but other people might want everything covered. I've seen people do the, show, the shoe completely covered with pearls 
halfbacks, things like that. So, you know, however you want to do it, it's completely on you. This is just how I chose to do um, my baby shoe. So, I will cover this with jewels in like a rainbow spectrum, the way I did there. But again, I have to wait for the jewels to come. And then, of course, I have the gl um, glitter. The rainbow ribbon here, it's like a organza, so it's sheer, see-through. I'll show you how to do that at the end. But, the other thing I do have is this number one. Um, I wanted to put her name, but the shoes are so small. And her name, even though it's not long, it would just take up too much space. So I just decided to put the number one um, since she's turning one. And this font is actually Coco Melon font. And what I did was I um, put, put it in the Cricut for the number one. And I made it a little bit wider. So otherwise this would have been very narrow. So I made it wider since it's like a bubble letter um, to make it look a little bit better. And I did it on... Um, glitter vinyl so here's my other number one that i already cut out and i'm going to put it in the same spot like so now this i can't put on my um on my heat press because it's a shoe you know the heat press is going to flatten it so i can't do that so what i'm going to do instead i just invested in one of these handy dandy little cricket um Heat presses, the little guy. It's so cute. I don't know why. I just love it. It's just so cute. It's handy. I really like it. Um, I got it on Amazon, so I'll put the link down below. But I got it for projects like these, things that I just can't put on the heat press. So I line it up where I want it. I think that looks good. So the first pass I'm going to give over it is just kind of get it to stick where I want it. So I'm just going to hold it and then kind of put this on top and not burn myself. So I used my fingers like inside at first, but that's not enough. So then I just took, I'm using this E6000 glue to do the um, the jewels tomorrow. So I just put that inside so I can have something to um, give it some backing as I finish pressing it. Try your best to give it some pressure also, because when you're adhering heat transfer vinyl, it's not just about the heat, it's also about the pressure that you apply to make the, to make it last longer. Now the good thing about these shoes is obviously they're not going in the washer. Anything that goes in the washer, you really want to make sure it adheres very well. So when you think it's ready, go ahead and take a look by peeling it. Boom. Oh, got a little, a little string hanging. So, already in those steps, we have the patch on the tongue and we have a number one on the side so literally all that's left is the jewels and then of course the you know what I'm putting for a shoelace at the end but we'll pick this project back up tomorrow when my jewels come in the mail okay and so now for the final stage I finally got all of my gems in the mail so we're gonna go ahead and bling her last shoe out this is where we're at again. We have the Coco Melon patch. It's still holding up good with the glue gun, as well as the number one right here. So what we have here are flat back rhinestones in different colors. So I have five colors here. This is what it came in. I'll put the link down below on Amazon where I got these. So it has all, these are all different, each a different color. I only used um, five of the colors. Just kidding, six. I used six of the colors. Now in each little compartment, there's a different color and within each compartment, within each color, there are five different sizes. I only use the two biggest sizes because some of those other ones are so small, they're like, I don't know how anybody could ever work with those. Those are like impossible, they're tiny. Um, so the two largest sizes are SS30, which are the bigger ones here. And then the second biggest size is SS20. So if you just want to look for just those sizes and save yourself the headache, because I just spent about 20 minutes sorting out the two largest sizes from these. Um, because I ran out last time, so I ordered more. So these are the two I ordered extra. Um, and then here's the original pack that I had. So now I have three packs, and there's a bunch of sizes in there that I'll probably never use. But um, So if you just want to order what you need... If you're going to do the same sizes that I did, then you want to do SS30 and SS20. So SS30 is approximately 6.5 millimeters, and then SS20 are approximately 5 millimeters. Just so you know. So if you need to look it up that way, that's fine. So here's my SS30s and my SS20s. 
to adhere them, I'm going to use E6000 glue. You can get this anywhere at your craft store. This is like the best glue ever. It does take a minute to dry. Like really, give, if you glue something with this, give it at least 24 hours, but it's like cement. It's great. Um, it has a horrible smell to it. It is very, like make sure that you have like air it out and stuff because it's very strong, very strong. Um, and then if you're gonna be using this, like make sure you have some napkins or something. I have a whole stack I went through last time because it, it keeps leaking in, in between. Uh, and you'll see. And then also I have a wax pen. Wax pencil, I should say. It's really just wax. I got this on Amazon as well. I'll put the link down below. I got a pack of them. Um, a lot of times you use these for like, if you're doing those diamond dot paintings, like paint by diamonds, that's where I originally got these for. So I just reused it now because they work great when you're working with rhinestones. Because basically you can just um, pick it up like that and drop it like I did. Uh -huh. So just be careful. But it makes it a lot easier to adhere to whatever you're using. So in this case, I'm, you know, using the shoe. So you'll see, I'll, I'll put the camera overhead so you can see, like, bird's eye view what I'm doing. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. Also, I have this. I'll link it down below. I also got this on Amazon. This is like an organza. I believe that's how you say it. And, you know, it's kind of like sheer, like, see-through rainbow ribbon. And I use this as the shoelaces. If you need a lighter to heat seal it now mind you it is ribbon so there's no like I don't, what do you call that thing like the tip of the shoelace to get you know to, so to help you get it thread it through the shoe holes I feel like there, there are technical terms for these things but you know what I mean um, what I did last time is I just used some tape and I kind of like made one for the edge it's a little ghetto but it worked. Um, this time I, f I figured I'd try a trick with some heat sealing and some tape possibly and see if I make it a little less ghetto, but we'll see. So um, on, the on the toe, this little like spectrum rainbow here, I used the SS20s, the smaller ones, and then on the sides and then on the back is where I used the SS30, the bigger ones. And again, do whatever you like, whatever works for you. If you want every inch of it to be blinged out, go for it. If you want two or three gems, go for it. Whatever works for you, whatever is your preference. And I believe that's it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to work. Thanks for watching again. Um, thanks for all your support. And let me know if you have any questions or comments down below.
Que es pues a cara, 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 c